indigenous Australians are the original inhabitants of the Australian continent and nearby islands. Recent findings indicate that indigenous Australians migrated from Africa to Asia around 70,000 years ago and arrived in Australia around 50,000 years ago. The Torres Strait Islanders are indigenous to the Torres Strait Islands, which are at the northernmost tip of Queensland near Papua New Guinea. The term Aboriginal is traditionally applied to only the indigenous inhabitants of mainland Australia and Tasmania, along with some of the adjacent islands, that is the First Peoples. Indigenous Australians is an inclusive term used when referring to both Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. The earliest definite human remains found to date are those of Mungo Man, which have been dated at about 40,000 years old. However, the time of arrival of the ancestors of indigenous Australians is a matter of debate among researchers, with estimates dating back as far as 125,000 years ago. There is great diversity among different indigenous communities and societies in Australia, each with its own unique mixture of cultures, customs and languages. In present-day Australia these groups are further divided into local communities. Although there were over 250 Euro 300 spoken languages with 600 dialects at the start of European settlement, fewer than 200 of these remain in use, and all but 20 are considered to be endangered. Aboriginal people today mostly speak English, with Aboriginal phrases and words being added to create Australian Aboriginal English. The population of indigenous Australians at the time of permanent European settlement has been estimated at between 318,000 and 1 million with the distribution being similar to that of the current Australian population, with the majority living in the southeast, centred along the Murray River. Since 1995, the Australian Aboriginal flag and the Torres Strait Islander flag have been among the official flags of Australia. Indigenous Australia Terminology Though indigenous Australians are seen as being broadly related as part of what has been called the Australoid race, there are significant differences in social, cultural and linguistic customs between the various Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander groups. The word Aboriginal has been in the English language since at least the 16th century, to mean, first or earliest known, indigenous. It comes from the Latin word Aborigines, derived from Ab and Origo. The word was used in Australia to describe its indigenous peoples as early as 1789. It soon became capitalised and employed as the common name to refer to all indigenous Australians. Strictly speaking, Aborigine is the noun and Aboriginal the adjectival form. However the latter is often also employed to stand as a noun. Use of either Aborigine, S, or Aboriginal, S as a to refer to individuals has acquired negative connotations in some sectors of the community, and it is generally regarded as insensitive and even offensive. The more acceptable and correct expression is Aboriginal Australians or Aboriginal people. The term Indigenous Australians, which also includes Torres Strait Islander peoples, has found increasing acceptance, particularly since the 1980s. Regional Groups the broad term Aboriginal Australians includes many regional groups that often identify under names from local indigenous languages. These include Corian New South Wales and Victoria, Angu Norl in the Australian Capital Territory and surrounding areas of New South Wales, Murray and Queensland and some parts of northern New South Wales, Murdi in southwestern central Queensland, Nyungar in southern western Australia. Yamatji in central western Australia, Wangai in the western Australian goldfields, Nunga in southern South Australia, Nangu in northern South Australia, and neighbouring parts of Western Australia and Northern Territory, Yapa in western central Northern Territory, Yungu in eastern Arnhem Land, Bininj in western Arnhem Land, Tiwi on Tiwi Islands off Arnhem Land. Anindililqua on Groot Eland off Arnhem Land. Pala and Tasmania. These larger groups may be further subdivided. For example, Mainanga recognizes localized subdivisions such as Pitjantjatjara, Yankunitjatjara, Nganiatjara, Liratja and Antikirinaya. It is estimated that prior to the arrival of British settlers, 
the population of indigenous Australians was approximately 318,000 euro 750,000 across the continent. Torres Strait Islanders The Torres Strait Islanders possess a heritage and cultural history distinct from Aboriginal traditions. The eastern Torres Strait Islanders in particular are related to the Fapuan peoples of New Guinea, and speak a Fapuan language. Accordingly, they are not generally included under the designation Aboriginal Australians. This has been another factor in the promotion of the more inclusive term Indigenous Australians. 6% of Indigenous Australians identify themselves fully as Torres Strait Islanders. A further 4% of Indigenous Australians identify themselves as having both Torres Strait Islander and Aboriginal heritage. The Torres Strait Islands comprise over 100 islands which were annexed by Queensland in 1879. Many indigenous organizations incorporate the phrase Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander to highlight the distinctiveness and importance of Torres Strait Islanders in Australia's indigenous population. Eddie Marbo was from Mel Murray Island in the Torres Strait, which the famous Marbo decision of 1992 involved. Black the term blacks has been used to refer to indigenous Australians since European settlement. While originally related to skin color, the term is used today to indicate Aboriginal heritage or culture in general and refers to people of any skin pigmentation. In the 1970s, many Aboriginal activists, such as Gary Foley proudly embraced the term black, and writer Kevin Gilbert's groundbreaking book from the time was entitled Living Black. The book included interviews with several members of the Aboriginal community including Robert Job and Unger reflecting on contemporary Aboriginal culture. History Arrival and Occupation of Australia Most scholars date the arrival of humans in Australia at 40,000 to 50,000 years ago, with a possible range of up to 125,000 years ago. The earliest anatomically modern human remains found in Australia are those of Mungo Man which have been dated at 42,000 years old. The initial comparison of the mitochondrial DNA from the skeleton known as Lake Mungo III with that of ancient and modern Aborigines indicated that Mungo Man is not related to Australian Aborigines. However these findings have been met with a general lack of acceptance in scientific communities, the sequence is criticized as there has been no independent testing and these results may be due to posthumous modification and thermal degradation of the DNA. Although the contested results seem to indicate that Mungo Man may have been an extinct subspecies that diverged before the most recent common ancestor of contemporary humans, it is generally accepted that the Lake Mungo remains a direct ancestors of present-day indigenous Australians. Independent DNA testing is unlikely as the indigenous custodians are not expected to allow further invasive investigations. It is generally believed that Aboriginal people are the descendants of a single migration into the continent, split from the first modern human populations to leave Africa, 64,000 to 75,000 years ago, although a minority proposed that there were three waves of migration, most likely island hopping by boat during periods of low sea levels. Aboriginal people seem to have lived a long time in the same environment as the now extinct Australian megafauna. Genetically, while some indigenous Australians have a Melanesian and Fapuan admixture, most are more closely related to Central and South Asian populations. Research indicates a single founding Sahil group with subsequent isolation between regional populations which were relatively unaffected by later migrations from the Asian mainland. The research also suggests a divergence from other global lineages 32,000 years ago with a rapid population expansion about 5,000 years ago. A 2011 genetic study found evidence that Aboriginal peoples carry some of the genes associated with the Denisovan peoples of Asia suggesting that modern and archaic humans interbred in Asia before the migration to Australia. A 2012 paper reports that there is also evidence of genetic flow from India to northern Australia estimated at slightly over 4,000 years ago. Aboriginal people mainly lived as hunter-gatherers, hunting and foraging for food from the land. Although Aboriginal society was generally mobile, or semi-nomadic, moving due to the changing food availability found across different areas as seasons changed, the mode of life and material cultures varied greatly from region to region and there were permanent settlements and agriculture in some areas.
the greatest population density was to be found in the southern and eastern regions of the continent, the River Murray Valley in particular. There is evidence that some Aboriginal populations in northern Australia regularly traded with Makassan fishermen from Indonesia before the arrival of Europeans. At the time of first European contact, it is generally estimated that the pre-1788 population was 314,000, while recent archaeological finds suggest that a population of 500,000 to 750,000 could have been sustained, with some ecologists estimating a population of up to a million people was possible. The population was split into 250 individual nations, many of which were in alliance with one another, and within each nation there existed several clans, from as few as five or six to as many as thirty or forty. Each nation had its own language and a few had several. Since British settlement, British colonisation of Australia began with the arrival of the first fleet in Botany Bay in 1788. One immediate consequence of British settlement was a series of European epidemic diseases such as measles, smallpox and tuberculosis. In the 19th century, smallpox was the principal cause of Aboriginal deaths. A smallpox epidemic in 1789 is estimated to have killed up to 90% of the Darug people. Some scholars have attributed the outbreak to European settlers, while other writers, such as Judy Campbell, argue that Makassan fishermen from South Sulawesi and nearby islands may have introduced smallpox to Australia prior to European settlement. Reviews by Christopher Warren and in 2013 and Craig Meir suggest that the outbreak was most likely caused by British supplies of virus imported with the First Fleet. Warren proposed that the British had no choice but to deploy the virus as a form of defence as they were confronted with dire circumstances when, among other factors, they ran out of ammunition for their muskets. A consequence of British settlement was appropriation of land and water resources, which continued throughout the 19th and early 20th centuries as rural lands were converted for sheep and cattle grazing. In 1834 there occurred the first recorded use of Aboriginal trackers, who proved very adept at navigating their way through the Australian landscape and finding people. During the 1860s, Tasmanian Aboriginal skulls were particularly sought internationally for studies into craniofacial anthropometry. Truganini, the last Tasmanian Aborigine, had her skeleton exhumed within two years of her death in 1876 by the Royal Society of Tasmania, and later placed on display. Campaigns continued to have Aboriginal body parts returned to Australia for burial. In 1868, a group of mostly Aboriginal cricketers toured England, becoming the first Australian cricket team to travel overseas. 20th and 21st centuries, by 1900 the recorded indigenous population of Australia had declined to approximately 93,000 although this was only a partial count as both mainstream and tribal Aboriginal people and Torres Strait Islanders were poorly covered with desert Aboriginal peoples not counted at all until the 1930s. The last uncontacted tribe left the Gibson Desert in 1984. During the first half of the 20th century, Many indigenous Australians worked as stockmen on sheep stations and cattle stations. The indigenous population continued to decline, reaching a low of 74,000 in 1933 before numbers began to recover. By 1995 population numbers had reached pre-colonisation levels and in 2010 there were around 563,000 indigenous Australians. Although, as British subjects, all indigenous Australians were nominally entitled to vote, generally only those who merged into mainstream society did so. Only Western Australia and Queensland specifically excluded Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people from the electoral rolls. Despite the Commonwealth Franchise Act of 1902 that excluded Aboriginal natives of Australia, Asia, Africa and Pacific Islands except New Zealand from voting unless they were on the roll before 1901, South Australia insisted that all voters enfranchised within its borders would remain eligible to vote in the Commonwealth and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people continued to be added to their roles albeit haphazardly. Despite efforts to bar their enlistment, around 500 Indigenous Australians fought for Australia in the First World War, 1934 saw the first appeal to the High Court by an Aboriginal Australian, and it succeeded. Dakiyar was found to have been wrongly convicted of the murder of a white policeman, 
for which he had been sentenced to death. The case focused national attention on Aboriginal rights issues. Dakiyao disappeared upon release. In 1938, the 150th anniversary of the arrival of British First Fleet was marked as a day of mourning and protest at an Aboriginal meeting in Sydney. Hundreds of Indigenous Australians served in the Australian Armed Forces during World War II a Euro including with the Torres Strait Light Infantry Battalion and the Northern Territory Special Reconnaissance Unit, which were established to guard Australia's north against the threat of Japanese invasion. The 1960s was a pivotal decade in the assertion of Aboriginal rights and a time of growing collaboration between Aboriginal activists and white Australian activists. In 1962, Commonwealth legislation specifically gave Aboriginal people the right to vote in Commonwealth elections. A group of University of Sydney students organised a bus tour of western and coastal New South Wales towns in 1965 to raise awareness of the state of Aboriginal health and living conditions. This Freedom Ride also aimed to highlight the social discrimination faced by Aboriginal people and encourage Aboriginal people themselves to resist discrimination. In 1966, Vincent Lingiari led a famous walk-off of indigenous employees of Wave Hill Station in protest against poor pay and conditions. The landmark 1967 referendum called by Prime Minister Harold Holt allowed the Commonwealth to make laws with respect to Aboriginal people, and for Aboriginal people to be included when the country does account to determine electoral representation. The referendum passed with 90.77% voter support. In the controversial 1971 Gove Land Rights case, Justice Blackburn ruled that Australia had been terra nullius before British settlement, and that no concept of native title existed in Australian law. In 1971, Neville Bonner joined the Australian Senate as a senator for Queensland for the Liberal Party, becoming the first Indigenous Australian in the federal parliament. A year later, the Aboriginal Tent Embassy was established on the steps of Parliament House in Canberra. In 1976, Sir Douglas Nicholls was appointed as the 28th Governor of South Australia, the first Aboriginal person appointed to vice regal office. In sport Yvonne Julegon Qualley became the world number one ranked tennis player in 1971 and won 14 Grand Slam titles during her career. In 1973 Arthur Beetson became the first Indigenous Australian to captain his country in any sport when he first led the Australian National Rugby League team the Kangaroos. In 1982, Mark Eller became captain of the Australian National Rugby Union team, the Wallabies. In 1984, a group of Pentupi people who were living a traditional hunter-gatherer desert dwelling life were tracked down in the Gibson Desert in Western Australia and brought into a settlement. They are believed to be the last uncontacted tribe in Australia. In 1985, the Australian government returned ownership of Uluru to the Pitjantjatjara Aboriginal people. In 1992, the High Court of Australia handed down its decision in the Mabo case, declaring the previous legal concept of terra nullius to be invalid. A constitutional convention which selected a republican model for the referendum in 1998 included just six indigenous participants, leading monarchist delegate Neville Bonner to end his contribution to the convention with his Jadra tribal sorry chant in sadness at the low number of indigenous representatives. The republican model, as well as a proposal for a new constitutional preamble which would have included the honoring of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, was put to referendum but did not succeed. In 1999 the Australian Parliament passed a motion of reconciliation drafted by Prime Minister John Howard in consultation with Aboriginal Senator Aidan Ridgeway naming mistreatment of Indigenous Australians as the most blemished chapter in our national history. In 2000, Aboriginal sprinter Cathy Freeman lit the Olympic flame at the opening ceremony of the 2000 Summer Olympics in Sydney and went on to win the 400 metres at the Games. In 2001, the federal government dedicated Reconciliation Place in Canberra. In 2004, the Australian government abolished the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Commission amidst allegations of corruption. In 2007, Prime Minister John Howard and Indigenous Affairs Minister Mal Brawl launched the Northern Territory National Emergency Response in response to the Little Children Are Sacred report into allegations of child abuse among indigenous communities.
the government banned alcohol in prescribed communities in the territory. Quarantined a percentage of welfare payments for essential goods purchasing. Dispatched additional police and medical personnel to the region. And suspended the permit system for access to indigenous communities. In 2010, a United Nations special rapporteur found the emergency response to be racially discriminatory and said that aspects of it represented a limitation on individual autonomy. Indigenous Affairs Minister Jenny McLean disagreed, saying that her duty to protect the rights of children was paramount. The opposition questioned whether Renea had adequately consulted. And indigenous leaders like Warren Mundin and Bess Price criticized the UN findings. The intervention has continued under the Rudd Gillard Labour government. On February 13, 2008, Prime Minister Kevin Rudd issued a public apology to members of the Stolen Generations on behalf of the Australian government. In the general election of 2010, Ken Wyatt of the Liberal Party became the first Indigenous Australian elected to the Australian House of Representatives. On December 23, 2010 the federal government appointed a panel comprising indigenous leaders, other legal experts and some members of parliament to provide advice on how best to recognize Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in the federal constitution. On May 16, 2010 the panel issued a discussion paper and launched a website, under the heading Yumi Unity. These invited submissions and participation in consultation sessions. More than 3,500 submissions were received and more than 200 public consultations and other meetings were held, including meetings in remote communities. An interim communica copyright in December 2010 indicated majority support for constitutional recognition and for removing the sections of the federal constitution that permit discrimination on the basis of race. The panel provided the final report to the federal government in January 2012. The panel made a number of recommendations for constitutional reform. The recommendations included the deletion of Section 25 of the Constitution of Australia which permits any state to disqualify persons of any race from voting and Section 51, XXVI, which empowers the federal parliament to make special laws for people of any particular race. The repeal of these sections would remove the word race from the Constitution of Australia entirely. It was also recommended that three new sections be included, sections 51A, 116A and 127A to ensure meaningful recognition and further protection from discrimination. The federal government is not bound by the panel's recommendations and their adoption will depend on whether they receive the necessary political and public support for success at the proposed 2013 referendum to recognize Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in the constitution. On November 23, 2011, the Stronger Futures Policy legislation was introduced to the Parliament by Jenny McLean, the Minister for Families, Community Services and Indigenous Affairs. The policy intends to address key issues that exist within Aboriginal communities of the Northern Territory such as unemployment, school attendance and enrolment, alcohol abuse, community safety and child protection, food security and housing and land reforms. The policy has been criticised by organisations such as Amnesty International and Concerned Citizens of Australia. The Stand for Freedom campaign leads the public movement against this legislation and criticises many measures of the legislation since they maintain racially discriminatory elements of the Northern Territory Emergency Response Act and continue the control of the Australian government over Aboriginal people and their lands. However, Several prominent members of the Australian government continue to voice support for the Stronger Futures policy. Culture There are a large number of tribal divisions and language groups in Aboriginal Australia, and, correspondingly, a wide variety of diversity exists within cultural practices. However, there are some similarities between cultures. Languages there were more than 250 languages spoken by indigenous Australians prior to the arrival of Europeans. Most of these are now either extinct or moribund, with only about 15 languages still being spoken by all age groups. Linguists classify many of the mainland Australian languages into one large group, the Pomara Euro Nyungan languages. The rest are sometimes lumped under the term non Pomara Euro Nyungan. The Pomara Euro Nyungan languages comprise the majority, covering most of Australia, 
and are generally thought to be a family of related languages. In the north, stretching from the western Kimberley to the Gulf of Carpentaria, are found a number of non pomara euro nyungan groups of languages which have not been shown to be related to the pomara euro nyungan family nor to each other. While it has sometimes proven difficult to work out familial relationships within the pomara euro nyungan language family, many Australian linguists feel there has been substantial success. Against this some linguists, such as R. M. W. Dixon, suggest that the pomara euro nyungan group are Euro and indeed the entire Australian linguistic area a Euro is rather a sprachbund, or group of languages having very long and intimate contact, rather than a genetic language family. It has been suggested that, given their long presence in Australia, Aboriginal languages form one specific subgrouping. The position of Tasmanian languages is unknown, and it is also unknown whether they comprised one or more than one specific language family. Belief Systems Religious demography among indigenous Australians is not conclusive because the methodology of the census is not always well suited to obtaining accurate information on Aboriginal people. In the 2006 census, 73% of the indigenous population reported an affiliation with a Christian denomination, 24% reported no religious affiliation and 1% reported affiliation with an Australian Aboriginal traditional religion. A small but growing minority of Aborigines are followers of Islam. Aboriginal people traditionally adhered to animist spiritual frameworks. Within Aboriginal belief systems, a formative epoch known as the Dreamtime stretches back into the distant past when the creator ancestors known as the First Peoples travelled across the land, creating and naming as they went. Indigenous Australia's oral tradition and religious values are based upon reverence for the land and a belief in this Dreamtime. The dreaming is at once both the ancient time of creation and the present-day reality of dreaming. There were a great many different groups, each with its own individual culture, belief structure, and language. These cultures overlapped to a greater or lesser extent, and evolved over time. Major ancestral spirits include the Rainbow Serpent, Baayam, Diarawong and Bunjil. Music Music has formed an integral part of the social, cultural and ceremonial observances of people through the millennia of their individual and collective histories to the present day, and has existed for 50,000 years. The various indigenous Australian communities developed unique musical instruments and folk styles. The didgeridoo, which is widely thought to be a stereotypical instrument of Aboriginal people, was traditionally played by people of only the eastern Kimberley region and Arnhem Land, and then by only the men. Around 1950, the first research into Aboriginal music was undertaken by the anthropologist Adolphus Elkin, who recorded Aboriginal music in Arnhem Land. Hip-hop music is helping preserve indigenous languages. At the Sydney 2000 Olympics, Christina Nu sang the song My Island Home at the closing ceremony. Art Australia has a tradition of Aboriginal art which is thousands of years old, the best-known forms being rock art and bark painting. Evidence of Aboriginal art in Australia can be traced back at least 30,000 years. Examples of ancient Aboriginal rock art works can be found throughout the continent of Euro notably in national parks such as those of the UNESCO listed sites at Uluru and Kakad National Park in the Northern Territory, but also within protected parks in urban areas such as at Kooringai Chase National Park in Sydney. The Sydney rock engravings are approximately 5,000 to 200 years old. Muadjuga in Western Australia has the Friends of Australian Rock Art have advocated its preservation, and the numerous engravings there were heritage listed in 2007. In terms of age and abundance, cave art in Australia is comparable to that of Lesaw and Altamira in Europe, and Aboriginal art is believed to be the oldest continuing tradition of art in the world. There are three major regional styles, the geometric style found in Central Australia, Tasmania the Kimberley and Victoria known for its concentric circles, arcs and dots. The simple figurative style found in Queensland and the complex figurative style found in Arnhem Land and the Kimberley which includes X-ray art, Gwyn Gwyn and Wanjina. These designs generally carry significance linked to the spirituality of the dreamtime. Paintings were usually created in earthy colours, from paint made from ochre.
Such ochres were also used to paint their bodies for ceremonial purposes. Modern Aboriginal artists continue the tradition, using modern materials in their artworks. Several styles of Aboriginal art have developed in modern times, including the watercolour paintings of the Hermansburg School, and the acrylic Papunia de la Dot art movement. William Barrack was one of the last traditionally educated of the Wirunjeri Willem, people who come from the district now incorporating the city of Melbourne. He remains notable for his artworks which recorded traditional Aboriginal ways for the education of Westerners was among the early non-Indigenous painters to incorporate Aboriginal influences in her works. Albert Namat Jira is one of the most famous Australian artists and an Arant man. His landscapes inspired the Hermansburg School of Art. The works of Elizabeth Durack are notable for their fusion of Western and Indigenous influences. Since the 1970s, Indigenous artists have employed the use of acrylic paints a Euro with styles such as that of the Western Desert Art Movement becoming globally renowned 20th century art movements. The National Gallery of Australia exhibits a great many Indigenous art works, including those of the Torres Strait Islands who are known for their traditional sculpture and headgear. Literature by 1788, indigenous Australians had not developed a system of writing, so the first literary accounts of Aborigines come from the journals of early European explorers, which contain descriptions of first contact, both violent and friendly. Early accounts by Dutch explorers and the English buccaneer William Dampier wrote of the natives of New Holland as being barbarous savages, but by the time of Captain James Cook and First Fleet Marine Watkin Tench, accounts of Aborigines were more sympathetic and romantic, these people may truly be said to be in the pure state of nature, and may appear to some to be the most wretched upon the earth. But in reality they are far happier than. We Europeans, wrote Cook in his journal on August 23, 1770. Letters written by early Aboriginal leaders like Benelong and Sir Douglas Nichols are retained as treasures of Australian literature as is the historic Iracala Bark Petitions of 1963 which is the first traditional Aboriginal document recognised by the Australian Parliament. David Unapan is credited as providing the first accounts of Aboriginal mythology written by an Aboriginal, legendary tales of the Aborigines. He is known as the first Aboriginal author. Audrey Nobunuckle was a famous Aboriginal poet, writer and rights activist credited with publishing the first Aboriginal book of verse. We are going. Sally Morgan's novel My Place was considered a breakthrough memoir in terms of bringing indigenous stories to wider notice. Leading Aboriginal activists Marcia Langton and Noel Pearson are active contemporary contributors to Australian literature. The voices of indigenous Australians are being increasingly noticed and include the playwright Jack Davis and Kevin Gilbert. Writers coming to prominence in the 21st century include Alexis Wright, Kim Scott, twice winner of the Miles Franklin Award, Tara June Winch, in poetry Yvette Holt and in popular fiction Anita Heise. Australian Aboriginal poetry a Euro ranging from sacred to everyday a Euro is found throughout the continent. Many notable works have been written by non-Indigenous Australians on Aboriginal themes. Examples include the poems of Judith Wright, The Chant of Jimmy Blacksmith by Thomas Keneally and the short story by David Mouth the only speaker of his tongue. Histories covering indigenous themes include The Native Tribes of Central Australia by Spencer and Gillen, 1899. The Diaries of Donald Thompson on the subject of the Yonga people of Arnhem Land. Geoffrey Blaney. Henry Reynolds. And Marcia Langton. Differing interpretations of Aboriginal history are also the subject of contemporary debate in Australia notably between the essayists Robert Mann and Keith Windshuttle. Austlitz Black Words Project provides a comprehensive listing of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander writers and storytellers. Film, Australian cinema has a long history and the ceremonies of Indigenous Australians were among the first subjects to be filmed in Australia a Euro notably a film of Aboriginal dancers in Central Australia, shot by the anthropologist Baldwin Spencer in 1900. 1955's Jeddah was the first Australian feature film to be shot in colour, the first to star Aboriginal actors in lead roles, and the first to be entered at the Cannes Film Festival. 1971's Walkabout was a British film set in Australia, 
It was a forerunner to many Australian films related to indigenous themes and introduced David Gulpilal to cinematic audiences. 1976's Chant of Jimmy Blacksmith, directed by Fred Pusey, was an award-winning historical drama from a book by Thomas K. Neely about the tragic story of an Aboriginal bush ranger. The canon of films related to indigenous Australians also increased over the period of the 1990s and early 21st century, with Nick Parsons' 1996 film Dead Heart featuring Ernie Dingo and Brian Brown. Rolf de Heer's Tracker, starring Gary Sweet and David Gulpilil, and Philip Noyce's Rabbit Proof Fence in 2002. The 2006 film Ten Canoes was filmed entirely in an indigenous language and the film won a special jury prize at the Cannes Film Festival. Traditional Recreation Though lost to history, many traditional forms of recreation were played and while these varied from tribe to tribe, there were often similarities. It is an area of much recent research and interest. Ball games were quite popular and played by tribes across Australia, as were games based on use of weapons. There is extensive documented evidence of traditional football games being played. Perhaps the most documented is a game popularly played by tribes in western Victorian regions of the Wimmera, Mali and Milia by the Jabwarung, Jadwajali and Jarajari people. Known as Mangrook, it was a type of kick-and-catch football game played with a ball made of possum hide, the existence of which was corroborated in accounts from European eyewitnesses and depicted in illustration. According to some accounts, it was played as far away as the Yarra Valley by the Wirunjari people, Gippsland by the Ganai people, and the Riverina in southwestern New South Wales. The Walpiri tribe of Central Australia played a kicking and catching game with possum skins known as PULTJA. Recent research by Queensland Human Movements academics Ken Edwards and Sharon Louth points to a wide range of games including similar football games being played in New South Wales. Queensland and the Northern Territory. Population, definition, over time Australia has used various means to determine membership of ethnic groups such as lineage, blood quantum, birth and self-determination. From 1869 until well into the 1970s, indigenous children under 12 years of age, with 25% or less Aboriginal blood were considered white and were often removed from their families by the Australian federal and state government agencies and church missions, under acts of their respective parliaments in order that they would have a reasonable chance of absorption into the white community to which they rightly belong. Grey areas in determination of ethnicity led to people of mixed ancestry being caught in the middle of divisive policies which often led to absurd situations. In 1935, an Australian of part indigenous descent left his home on a reserve to visit a nearby hotel where he was ejected for being Aboriginal. He returned home but was refused entry to the reserve because he was not Aboriginal. He attempted to remove his children from the reserve but was told he could not because they were Aboriginal. He then walked to the next town where he was arrested for being an Aboriginal vagrant and sent to the reserve there. During World War II he tried to enlist but was rejected because he was an Aborigine so he moved to another state where he enlisted as a non-Aborigine. After the end of the war he applied for a passport but was rejected as he was an Aborigine, he obtained an exemption under the Aborigines Protection Act but was now told he could no longer visit his relatives as he was not an Aborigine. He was later told he could not join the Returned Servicemen's Club because he was an Aborigine. In 1983 the High Court of Australia defined an Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander as a person of Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander descent who identifies as an Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander and is accepted as such by the community in which he or she lives. The ruling was a three-part definition comprising descent, self-identification and community identification. The first part a Euro descent a Euro was genetic descent and unambiguous but led to cases where a lack of records to prove ancestry excluded some. Self and community identification were more problematic as they meant that an indigenous person separated from her or his community due to a family dispute could no longer identify as Aboriginal. As a result there arose court cases throughout the 1990s where excluded people demanded that their aboriginality be recognized. In 1995, Justice Drummond ruled either genuine self-identification as Aboriginal alone or Aboriginal communal recognition as such by itself may suffice, 
according to the circumstances. This contributed to an increase of 31% in the number of people identifying as Indigenous Australians in the 1996 census when compared to the 1991 census. Judge Merkel in 1998 defined Aboriginal descent as technical rather than real a euro thereby eliminating a genetic requirement. This decision established that anyone can classify him or herself legally as an Aboriginal, provided he or she is accepted as such by his or her community. Inclusion in the National Census As there is no formal procedure for any community to record acceptance, the primary method of determining indigenous population is from self-identification on census forms. Until 1967, official Australian population statistics excluded full-blood Aboriginal natives in accordance with Section 127 of the Australian Constitution, even though many such people were actually counted. The size of the excluded population was generally separately estimated. Half-caste Aboriginal natives were shown separately up to the 1966 census, but since 1971 there has been no provision on the forms to differentiate full from part Indigenous or to identify non-Indigenous persons who were accepted by Indigenous communities but have no genetic descent. In the recent 2011 census, there was 20% rise in people who identify as Aboriginal. One explanation for this is, the definition being the way it is, it's quite elastic. You can find out that your great-great-grandmother was Aboriginal and therefore under that definition you can identify. It's that person's right to identify so that's what explains the large increase. Demographics State Distribution and Identification Growth Rate the Australian Bureau of Statistics 2005 Census of Australian Demographics showed that the indigenous population had grown at twice the rate of the overall population since 1996 when the indigenous population stood at 283,000. The Australian Bureau of Statistics estimated the total resident indigenous population to be 458,520 in June 2001. 90% of whom identified as Aboriginal, 6% Torres Strait Islander and the remaining 4% being of dual Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander parentage. Much of the increase since 1996 can be attributed to greater numbers of people identifying themselves as Aboriginal or of Aboriginal descent. Change definitions of Aboriginality and positive discrimination via material benefits have been cited as contributing to a movement to Indigenous identification. In the 2006 census, 407,700 respondents declared they were Aboriginal, 29,512 declared they were Torres Strait Islander, and a further 17,811 declared they were both Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. After adjustments for undercount, the indigenous population at the end of June 2006 was estimated to be 517,200 representing about 2.5% of the population. Based on census data at June 30, 2006, the preliminary estimate of Indigenous resident population of Australia was 517,200, broken down as follows, New South Wales a Euro 148,200, Queensland a Euro 146,400, Western Australia a Euro 77,900. Northern Territory a Euro 66,600, Victoria a Euro 30,800, South Australia a Euro 26,000, Tasmania a Euro 16,900, Australian Capital Territory a Euro 4,000, and a small number in other Australian territories, the state with the largest total Indigenous population is New South Wales. Indigenous Australians constitute 2.2% of the overall population of the state. The Northern Territory has the largest Indigenous population in percentage terms for a state or territory, with 31.6% of the population being Indigenous. In all of the other states and territories, less than 4% of their total population identifies as Indigenous. Victoria has the lowest percentage at 0.6%. Urbanisation rate in 2006 about 31% of the indigenous population was living in major cities and another 45% in regional Australia, with the remaining 24% in remote areas. The populations in Victoria, South Australia, and New South Wales are more likely to be urbanised. Intermarriage rate 
the proportion of Aboriginal adults married to non-Aboriginal spouses has increased to 74% according to the 2011 census, up from 71% in 2006, 64% in 1996, 51% in 1991 and 46% in 1986. The census figures show there were more intermixed Aboriginal couples in capital cities, 87% in 2001 compared to 60% in rural and regional Australia. It is reported that up to 88% of the offspring of mixed marriages subsequently self-identify as Indigenous Australians. Groups and Communities Throughout the history of the continent, there have been many different Aboriginal groups, each with its own individual language, culture, and belief structure. At the time of British settlement, there were over 200 distinct languages. There are an indeterminate number of indigenous communities, comprising several hundred groupings. Some communities, cultures or groups may be inclusive of others and alter or overlap. Significant changes have occurred in the generations after colonization. The word community is often used to describe groups identifying by kinship, language or belonging to a particular place or country. A community may draw on separate cultural values and individuals can conceivably belong to a number of communities within Australia. Identification within them may be adopted or rejected. An individual community may identify itself by many names, each of which can have alternate English spellings. The largest Aboriginal communities are Euro the Pitjant Jachjara, the Arant, the Liritja and the Walpi Rea Euro are all from Central Australia. Indigenous communities in remote Australia are typically small, isolated towns with basic facilities, on traditionally owned land. These communities have between 20 a Euro 300 inhabitants and are often close to outsiders for cultural reasons. The long-term viability and resilience of indigenous communities has been debated by scholars and continues to be a political issue receiving fluctuating media attention. Tasmania the Tasmanian Aboriginal population are thought to have first crossed into Tasmania approximately 40,000 years ago via a land bridge between the island and the rest of mainland Australia during the last glacial period. Estimates of the population of the Aboriginal people of Tasmania, before European arrival, are in the range of 3,000 to 15,000 people although genetic studies have suggested significantly higher figures which is supported by indigenous oral traditions that indicates a reduction in population from diseases introduced by British and American sealers before settlement. The original population was further reduced to around 300 between 1803 and 1833 due to disease, warfare and other actions of British settlers. Despite over 170 years of debate over who or what was responsible for this near extinction, no consensus exists on its origins, process, or whether or not it was genocide however, using the UN definition, sufficient evidence exists to designate the Tasmanian catastrophe genocide. A woman named True who died in 1876, was, and still is, widely believed to be the very last of the full-blooded Aborigines. However, in 1889 Parliament recognized Fanny Cochrane Smith as the last surviving full-blooded Tasmanian Aborigine. The 2006 census showed that there were nearly 17,000 Indigenous Australians in the state. Contemporary Issues The Indigenous Australian population is a mostly urbanized demographic, but a substantial number live in remote settlements often located on the site of former church missions. The health and economic difficulties facing both groups are substantial. Both the remote and urban populations have adverse ratings on a number of social indicators, including health, education, unemployment, poverty and crime. In 2004, Prime Minister John Howard initiated contracts with Aboriginal communities, where substantial financial benefits are available in return for commitments such as ensuring children attend school. These contracts are known as shared responsibility agreements. This saw a political shift from self-determination for Aboriginal communities to mutual obligation, which has been criticized as a paternalistic and dictatorial arrangement. Stolen Generations The Stolen Generations were those children of Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander descent who were forcibly removed from their families by the Australian federal and state government agencies and church missions under acts of their respective parliaments.
The removals occurred in the period between approximately 1871 and 1969, although, in some places, children were still being taken in the 1970s. On February 13, 2008, the Federal Government of Australia, led by Prime Minister Kevin Rudd, issued a formal apology to the Indigenous Australians over the stolen generations. Political Representation Under Section 41 of the Australian Constitution, Aboriginal Australians always had the legal right to vote in Australian Commonwealth elections if their state granted them that right. This meant that all Aboriginal peoples outside Queensland and Western Australia had a legal right to vote. The right of Indigenous ex-servicemen to vote was affirmed in 1949 and all Indigenous Australians gained the unqualified right to vote in federal elections in 1962. And like other Australians, however, voting was not made compulsory for Indigenous people. It was not until the repeal of Section 127 of the Australian Constitution in 1967 that Indigenous Australians were counted in the population for the purposes of distribution of electoral seats. Only two Indigenous Australians have been elected to the Australian Senate, Neville Bonner and Aidan Ridgway. Following the 2010 Australian federal election, Ken Wyatt of the Liberal Party won the Western Australian seat of Hasluck, becoming the first Indigenous person elected to the Australian House of Representatives. His nephew, Ben Wyatt was concurrently serving as Shadow Treasurer in the Western Australian Parliament and in 2011 considered a challenge for the Labour Party leadership in that state. In March 2013, Adam Giles of the country Liberal Party became Chief Minister of the Northern Territory Euro the first Indigenous Australian to become head of government in a state or territory of Australia. A number of Indigenous people represent electorates at state and territorial level, and South Australia has had an Aboriginal governor, Sir Douglas Nicholls. The first Indigenous Australian to serve as a minister in any government was Ernie Bridge, who entered the Western Australian Parliament in 1980. Carol Martin was the first Aboriginal woman elected to an Australian Parliament in 2001, and the first woman minister was Marion Scrimger who was appointed to the Northern Territory Ministry in 2002. Representation in the Northern Territory has been relatively high, reflecting the high proportion of Aboriginal voters. The 2012 Territory election saw large swings to the Conservative Country Liberal Party achieved in remote Territory electorates and a total of five Aboriginal CLP candidates won election to the Assembly in a chamber of 25 members. Among those elected for the CLP were high-profile activists Bess Price and Alison Anderson. The Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Commission, a representative body of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, was set up in 1990 under the Hawke government. In 2004, the Howard government disbanded ATSIC and replaced it with an appointed network of 30 indigenous coordination centers that administer shared responsibility agreements and regional partnership agreements with Aboriginal communities at a local level. In October 2007, just prior to the calling of a federal election, the then Prime Minister, John Howard, revisited the idea of bringing a referendum to seek recognition of indigenous Australians in the Constitution. His 2007 announcement was seen by some as a surprising adoption of the importance of the symbolic aspects of the reconciliation process, and reaction was mixed. The ALP initially supported the idea, however Kevin Rudd withdrew the support just prior to the election a Euro earning stern rebuke from activist Noel Pearson. Critical sections of the Australian public and media meanwhile suggested that Howard's raising of the issue was a cynical attempt in the lead-up to an election to whitewash his handling of this issue during his term in office. David Ross of the Central Land Council was sceptical, saying it's a new skin for an old snake, while former chairman of the Reconciliation Council Patrick Dodson gave qualified support, saying, I think it's a positive contribution to the process of national reconciliation. It's obviously got to be well discussed and considered and weighed, and it's got to be about meaningful and proper negotiations that can lead to the achievement of constitutional reconciliation. The Gillard Labour government, with bipartisan support, convened an expert panel to consider changes to the Australian constitution that would see recognition for Indigenous Australians.
the government promised to hold a referendum on the constitutional recognition of Indigenous Australians on or before the federal election due for 2013. The plan was abandoned in September 2012, with Minister Jenny McLean citing insufficient community awareness for the decision. Australian politicians of Indigenous ancestry, only 28 people recognised to be of Indigenous Australian ancestry have been members of the 10 Australian legislatures. Four have been members of the Parliament of Australia, since its inception in 1901. All of these have been of Aboriginal descent and the first was in 1971. Three have been members of the Senate, Neville Bonner, Aidan Ridgway and Nova Perrys. One is a member of the House of Representatives, Ken Wyatt. Among these, Perrys is the only woman. Six have been members of state parliaments, three in Western Australia and one each in New South Wales, Queensland and Tasmania. There have been no Indigenous members in the parliaments of the other states, South Australia and Victoria. Eighteen have been members of Territory Assemblies, seventeen in the Northern Territory, one in the Australian Capital Territory and none in Norfolk Island. The difference for the Northern Territory lies in the exceptionally high Indigenous proportion, about one-third, of its population. Adam Giles, who became Chief Minister of the Northern Territory in 2013, is the first Indigenous head of government in Australia. Age Characteristics the indigenous population of Australia is much younger than the non-indigenous population, with an estimated median age of 21 years, due to higher rates of birth and death. For this reason, age standardization is often used when comparing indigenous and non-indigenous statistics. Life expectancy The life expectancy of indigenous Australians is difficult to quantify accurately. Indigenous deaths are poorly identified, and the official figures for the size of the population at risk include large adjustment factors. Two estimates of indigenous life expectancy in 2008 differed by as much as five years. In some regions the median age of death was identified in 1973 to be as low as 47 years and the life expectancy gap between Aboriginal people and the rest of the Australian population as a whole, to be 25 years. From 1996 to 2001, the Australian Bureau of Statistics used indirect methods for its calculations, because census results were deemed to be unreliable, and figures published in 2005 indicated a widely quoted gap of 17 years between Indigenous and non-Indigenous life expectancy, though the ABS does not now consider the 2005 figures to be reliable. Using a new method based on tracing the deaths of people identified as Indigenous at the 2006 census, in 2009 the ABS estimated life expectancy at 67.2 years for Indigenous men and 72.9 years for Indigenous women. Estimated life expectancy of Indigenous men ranges from 61.5 years for those living in the Northern Territory to a high of 69.9 years for those living in New South Wales, and for Indigenous women, 69.2 years for those living in the Northern Territory to a high of 75.0 years for those living in New South Wales. Education Aboriginal students generally leave school earlier a euro, and live with a lower standard of education a euro than their cohorts, although the situation is improving, with significant gains between 1994 and 2002. 39% of Indigenous students stayed on to year 12 at high school, compared with 75% for the Australian population as a whole. 22% of Indigenous adults had a vocational or higher education qualification, compared with 48% for the Australian population as a whole. 4% of Indigenous Australians held a bachelor degree or higher, compared with 21% for the population as a whole. This proportion is increasing, but at a slower rate than for the Australian population as a whole. The performance of Indigenous students in national literacy and numeracy tests conducted in school years 3, 5, and 7 is also inferior to that of their cohorts. The following table displays the performance of Indigenous students against the general Australian student population as reported in the National Report on Schooling in Australia 2004. In response to this problem, the Commonwealth Government formulated a national Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander education policy. A number of government initiatives have resulted, some of which are listed at the Commonwealth Government's website.
the Aboriginal Centre for the Performing Arts was established as a training centre by the state and federal governments in 1997. Employment Indigenous Australians as a group generally experience high unemployment compared to the national average. This can be correlated to lower educational outcomes. In 2002, the average household income for Indigenous Australian adults was 60% of the non-Indigenous average. Health Indigenous Australians were twice as likely to report their health as fair poor and 1.5 times more likely to have a disability or long-term health condition. Health problems with the highest disparity in incidence are outlined in the table below. Each of these indicators is expected to underestimate the true prevalence of disease in the population due to reduced levels of diagnosis. In addition, the following factors have been at least partially implicated in the inequality in life expectancy, poverty, insufficient education, substance abuse, for remote communities poor access to health services, for urbanised indigenous Australians, cultural pressures which prevent access to health services, cultural differences resulting in poor communication between Indigenous Australians and health workers. Successive federal governments have responded to these issues by implementing programs such as the Office of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Health. Crime and Imprisonment In 2009 the imprisonment rate for Indigenous people was 14 times higher than that of non-Indigenous people. In 2000, Indigenous Australians were more likely per capita to be both victims of and perpetrators of reported crimes in New South Wales. In 2002, Indigenous Australians were twice as likely as non-Indigenous Australians of the same age group to be a victim of violent aggression, with 24% of Indigenous Australians reported as being a victim of violence in 2001. In 2004, Indigenous Australians were 11 times more likely to be in prison. In June 2004, 21% of prisoners in Australia were indigenous. There are frequent reports of domestic violence and community disturbances. Substance abuse. Many indigenous communities suffer from a range of health, social and legal problems associated with substance abuse of both legal and illegal drugs. The 2004 Euro 05 National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Health Survey by the ABS found that the proportion of the indigenous adult population engaged in risky and high-risk alcohol consumption was comparable with that of the non-indigenous population, based on age-standardized data. The definition of risky and high-risk consumption used as four or more standard drinks per day average for males, two or more for females. The 2007 National Drug Strategy Household Survey reported that Indigenous peoples were more likely than other Australians to abstain from alcohol consumption and also more likely to consume alcohol at risky or high-risk levels for harm in the short term. These NDSHS comparisons are non-age standardised. The paper notes that Indigenous figures are based on a sample of 372 people and care should be exercised when using Indigenous figures. Natsai's 2004-5 also found that, after adjusting for age differences between the two populations, indigenous adults were more than twice as likely as non-indigenous adults to be current daily smokers of tobacco. To combat the problem, a number of programs to prevent or mitigate alcohol abuse have been attempted in different regions, many initiated from within the communities themselves. These strategies include such actions as the declaration of dry zones within indigenous communities, prohibition and restriction on point-of-sale access, and community policing and licensing. Some communities introduced kava as a safer alternative to alcohol, as overindulgence in kava produces sleepiness, in contrast to the violence that can result from overindulgence in alcohol. These and other measures met with variable success, and while a number of communities have seen decreases in associated social problems caused by excessive drinking, others continue to struggle with the issue and it remains an ongoing concern. The ANCD study notes that in order to be effective, programs in general need also to address the underlying structural determinants that have a significant impact on alcohol and drug misuse. In 2007, Carver was banned in the Northern Territory. Petrol sniffing is also a problem among some remote indigenous communities. Petrol vapor produces euphoria and dulling effect in those who inhale it, and due to its previously low price and widespread availability, 
is an increasingly popular substance of abuse. Proposed solutions to the problem are a topic of heated debate among politicians and the community at large. In 2005 this problem among remote indigenous communities was considered so serious that a new, low aromatic petrol opal was distributed across the Northern Territory to combat it. Native title and sovereignty, about 22% of land in Northern Australia, Top End and Cape York, is now Aboriginal owned. In the last decade, Nearly 200 native title claims covering 1.3 million km2 of land a euro appropriately 18% of the Australian continent a euro have been approved. In 2013 an indigenous group describing itself as the Murawari Republic declared independence from Australia, claiming territory straddling the border of the states of New South Wales Queensland within Australia. Australia's Attorney General's Department indicated it did not consider the declaration to have any meaning in law. Prominent Indigenous Australians. After the arrival of European settlers in New South Wales, some Indigenous Australians became translators and go betweens. The best known was Ben Along, who eventually adopted European dress and customs and travelled to England where he was presented to King George III. Others, such as Pemulai, Yagan, and Windradine, became famous for armed resistance to the European settlers. During the 20th century, as social attitudes shifted and interest in indigenous culture increased, there were more opportunities for indigenous Australians to gain recognition. Albert Namat Jira became a painter, and actors such as David Gulpilil, Ernie Dingo, and Deborah Mailman became well known. Bands such as Yuthi Yindi, and singers Christina Nu, Jessica Moboy, and Jeffrey Gurumal Yanupingu, have combined indigenous musical styles and instruments with pop rock gaining appreciation amongst non-Indigenous audiences. Polymath David Unapan is commemorated on the Australian $50 note. Indigenous Australians have also featured in sport. Lionel Rose earned a world title in boxing. Yvonne Julegong became the world number one ranked female tennis player with 14 Grand Slam titles. Arthur Beetson, Laurie Daly and Gordon Tallis captained Australia in rugby league. Mark Ella captained Australia in rugby union. Notable Aboriginal athletes include Cathy Freeman who earned gold medals in the Olympics, World Championships, and Commonwealth Games. In Australian football, an increasing number of Indigenous Australians are playing at the highest level, the Australian Football League. Graham Farmer is said to have revolutionised the game in the ruck and handball areas, and Brownlow medalists and Indigenous team of the century members Gavin Wanganin and Adam Goods. Two Indigenous Australian basketball players, Nathan Jaway and Patty Mills, have played in the sport's most prominent professional league, the NBA. While relatively few Indigenous Australians have been elected to political office, Aboriginal rights campaigner Sir Douglas Nichols was appointed Governor of the State of South Australia in 1976, and many others have become famous through political activism a Euro for instance, Charles Perkins' involvement in the Freedom Ride of 1965 and subsequent work. Or Torres Strait Islander Eddie Marbo's part in the landmark native title decision that bears his name. The voices of Cape York activist Noel Pearson, Jean Little OAM and academics Marcia Langton and Mick Dodson today loom large in national debates. Some indigenous people who initially became famous in other spheres a Euro for instance, poet Audra Nawanukal a Euro have used their celebrity to draw attention to indigenous issues. In health services, Kelvin Kong became the first indigenous surgeon in 2006 and is an advocate of indigenous health issues. Representative sporting teams Aboriginal Australia has been represented in various sporting teams. Notable teams include the Indigenous All-Stars, Flying Boomerangs and Indigenous Team of the Century and the Indigenous All-Stars. The first organised trip of Australian cricketers to travel overseas was principally made up of Aboriginal members embarked on a tour of England in 1868. Tom Wills coached the team in a language that he learned as a child growing up amongst Aborigines in Victoria. Charles Lawrence accompanied them to England as captain and coach. See also, Aboriginal Sacred Site, Australian Indigenous Health Infonet, Australian Outback Literature of the 20th Century, Australoid Race, Customary Aboriginal Law, Indigenous Protected Areas, List of Indigenous Australian Firsts, 
List of Indigenous Peoples, List of Laws Concerning Indigenous Australians, NAIDOC Week, Northern Territory National Emergency Response, Welcome to Country and Acknowledgement of Country, Aboriginal Sites of New South Wales, References. Further reading, Condon, J. R., Barnes, T., Cunningham, J. and Smith. L. 2004, Demographic Characteristics and Trends of the Northern Territory Indigenous Population, 1966-2001. Cooperative Research Centre for Aboriginal Health. ISBN 1-920969-03-9, External Links. Science 2.0 Australian Aborigines were once Indians a Euro study, Australian Bureau of Statistics, key messages from the health and welfare of Australia's Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, 2010. Data from the 2008 National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Social Survey, Census of Population and Housing, the Australian Bureau of Statistics, and other administrative data sources. 4704.0 a euro the health and welfare of Australia's Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, 2010, closing the gap a euro celebrates the achievements of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and a gateway to information on Australian government indigenous initiatives and programs, Australian Museum, Indigenous Australia, the South Australian Museum, Tribal Boundaries and Aboriginal Australia Map, Indigenous Australian News and Articles, Indigenous Language Map, Australian Indigenous Health Info Net, Australian Human Rights Commission, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Social Justice Index, Indigenous Law Resources, National Indigenous Times A Euro National Indigenous Affairs Newspaper. NT Mojo's A Euro Northern Territory Mobile Journalists A Euro An Innovative, Pilot Mobile Journalism Project that is helping close the gap in the Northern Territory by giving Indigenous communities a chance to tell their stories in their own way. 3. A Euro Singing About Nations Within Nations, Geopolitics and Identity in Australian Indigenous Rock Music. 4. A Euro Indigenous Policy in Australia Since the 1970s.